Clara, Noor, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. How are you? We're good. Good. Very good. Very good. Very good. I want to know, obviously we're both originally from Sweden. What happens in terms of, do you know what? One day you wake up and you go, I'm going to move to Dubai. Tell me that story. No, let's start with you. Well, it started in like June, I think. We started to catch up some thoughts about it. Like maybe go to Dubai, try new experiences, new challenges. And um, well, nothing much happened really until September, I think. Um, And we just, in September, we just decided, well, we got this opportunity uh, with this company standpoint, um, and we just felt all right. It's meant to be because we got the same company, work at the same company, and it was just meant to be. I think. Clara. Yeah. Well, we discussed it because uh, his family lives here, and so we got that in mind. And uh, then maybe in we started searching in like. Well, September, that's when I first contacted Liv. And, uh, well, that's when I had the interview and then I spoke to her and then you and, yeah, here we are. Amazing. But I want to know a little bit more. Why Dubai? You, you could do this job in anywhere in the world. You could go to England, Europe, Sweden. So my question is, why Dubai and why not Sweden? Dubai well, has many good preferences like uh, you can see first of all no taxes we pay 33 percent in taxes from in sweden wow so that's a lot other thing in sweden to be a broker you have to go to university two years and uh, sometimes you have to pay for that and it costs like twenty five thousand dollars i think crazy that's a lot So it has some downsides Um, and not not like Europe now. I feel like the weather is boring, uh, taxes is boring, uh, more and more crimes are coming in Europe, a lot of crimes. Uh, And Sweden, not really much people hear about it, but it's becoming very, um, how to say, like a lot of crimes are growing in Sweden, gang wars, stuff like that. And you come here and that all disappears. And it's like you're in heaven in some way. Uh, and, and that's why like we, we chose Dubai. Very good. Similar? Yeah, it's pretty similar. I love the weather here. It's pretty nice and if you compare it to Sweden. And uh, also, as he says about the crimes, uh, it's getting worse. Like... England. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, well, then we came here and it feels really safe to be here because of all the like security they have. Yeah. That's one of the main things. A hundred percent. So we've done some research. We've done our interview. We've booked our flight. Yeah. How did your friends and family take the news that you were moving away from them? Well, my, I have like some couple of close friends, um, and they took it like, you should go, mm-hmm. go. Uh, and I was like, why? why? It's, it's a bit of a risk, to be honest. And th- they was like this. If you don't take the risk, the reward won't be the same. So high risk, high reward. And you have to take risks to become what you want. And in my mind, I want to be the best ever. I want to be the greatest. I want to be the one with the, the most money ever. That's what I have in my mind. And to, re- to reach that, they said, you have to go. Others was like, oh, Dubai, how is it like there? Can Clara dress up this, dress the same? Can, like, uh, are you supposed to, uh, can you walk with Clara on the road? Stuff like that. They're, they don't know much about it. So people, my friends took it great and good. Other people, like, look down on it. So 50-50. Yeah. yeah. What about your friends and family? Uh, my friends, they were happy for me, okay. and they 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 thought it like sounded great for me. And uh, well, my mom said it's like it really would fit me great. And uh, 
Then I told my great grandma that I'm moving here, and uh, she was like, "Do they have water?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, they do." Yeah. And then we started discussing like, "You should go there and sell water." Really? And uh, yeah, but my family took it. I mean, I it's as he says, like, it's a big risk, but it's a risk that's worth taking. Of course. So just going back to what you just said previously, you want to be yeah. the best, you want to make the most money. Back in Sweden, in your old job, yeah, was that you? Were you comfy? Were you at the top? Were you making the most money? Well, let, let's put it like this. Uh, when I started my job in Sweden, um, I wanted to be the best. I wanted to be like in the best department uh, uh, in, in, the, in my work. Uh, and I, I achieved that. The problem is to keep someone motivated. Like you earn, uh, uh, you earn money, but it's a roof, like it's a limit. You're capped. You're capped, exactly. And when you reach that limit, your motivation goes down because like you can't, you, 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 you don't grow, you can't evolve, you can't be better, you just stop. And that's what happens to me. And I, I couldn't motivate myself anymore. Because I, like, what, what do I do? Same thing, same money every month. Everything is the same, same routines. Of course. Were you capped in your old job as well? Well, was the max the max and you couldn't go further? Yeah, I mean, it was the same thing every day. Just it was customer service. I answered phone call with disappointed customers and I mean, it was a pretty big company and I mean, you couldn't really do much about it. If like the thing we're selling is bad, I couldn't like say anything to anyone because I couldn't like improve it in any way. And uh, well, it's as he says, like it's it's a limit. It's a roof. We discussed that in the interview as well. Uh, and here it's no ceiling. I think that's the one reason why I moved out here as well. Exact same answer. I was capped. The ceiling was my roof. I couldn't go higher. But now, as you can see, there is no ceiling. It's what you put in. It's it's the hard work, the patience. But I think there's one thing that everyone has to have in common is the fire in the belly. Yeah. Have you noticed that? You you can work, but you need the fire in the belly to make it work. Yeah. Well, look, I, I can be honest about this. When I, I was in Sweden, there's no way you can tell me you work from eight to eight. No way. We spoke about this like a couple of days ago. No way I would do that. But here, I will do that every day. Easy. Because it generates me money. Of course. I, I'm working like for myself. Of course I'm working for the company, but I'm working as well for myself. So when I sit here 12 hours, 13 hours, 14 hours, I'm doing it for myself. It's your own business. Exactly. And that's like, produce a lot more. And that's what I feel. That's why I'm glad with this job. I'm glad I took this opportunity because otherwise I would never do that. I would never work harder than I am supposed to because I will not generate any more money. Have you been working weekends and working evenings knowing that it's just going to benefit you? Um, yeah, uh, but not in Sweden. Uh, Nine till like, five. Yeah. Uh, it's like I had this routine, like I went to work and then I got home and like the last hour I just wanted to not be there. And uh, here it's different because it has, as Noor said, it's, it generates you money. I think in a nine till five corporate yeah. world, you watch the clock nine till five and you wait for that last hour yeah. and you, you clock off and you go home and that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but here there is no clock. No. And Dubai is... 24 seven, yeah. quite literally, yeah. you work weekends, you work evenings, but you know, you're going to get paid for it. So that's where it all pays off. So we've moved to Dubai. We've left our family. We've left our friends. How have you settled into Dubai? Not the job, but Dubai itself. Oh, um, Dubai itself. Well, let's start with, it's a lot of traffic here. <laughs> it's, it's easy. A, yeah. yeah. We come from like a small town in Sweden. <laughs> it takes us from. Uh, we live also like in the center, mm -hmm. so everything is close. Okay. If you want to go to the grocery store, like the, our biggest one, it takes us 10 minutes and we'll be back home in maximum 30 minutes, an hour, we're home. And we have, have had groceries for the whole week. If we got forgot anything, just go back and 
here, I think it takes you three to four hours. <laughs> depending on how you drive. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit difficult depending on what time you drive. Yeah. Uh, so th that's uh, like the big difference. Uh, but otherwise, you know, it's easy to adapt here. Everyone is kind and uh, friendly. Uh, the weather makes everyone happy. Of course. Like uh, we, we noticed that on the first day here in Standpoint, everyone who passes by, good morning, hi, hello, how are you? They don't even know us. We're new to them. But everyone is friendly. If we sat in a, like in Sweden, in an office, and we had an interview or something like that, people would just not notice you, just go by, pass by. And I, I think that's the main thing. I also, you know, even it's stressful here, everything goes 24 seven, stuff like that. People is always friendly here. That's what I love. I love how, if I was in England, people would look you up and down. Yeah. Who are you? Who, who's this guy? But everyone here wants to shake your hand. They want to know your story. Mm -hmm. They want to help you evolve and they want to help you become a better person. Mm -hmm. How have you settled into Dubai? Well, I haven't been to Dubai before, okay. um, so it's very new to me. And uh, I've been to the United States and, uh, well, I've gotten told that it's pretty much like United States. Okay. And uh, the traffic is like United States and uh, it's pretty heavy traffic. And uh, it takes us, I mean, if it's no traffic, it takes us to get like uh, 20 minutes to get here. And when it's traffic, it's like double the time. There is a load of new bridges coming and a load of new roads coming. So that will hopefully <laughs> yeah, improve hopefully the traffic. Yeah, hopefully we can sleep in some time. Of course, but I think that just shows how many people are coming and moving to Dubai. Yeah. That's good for us, right? Yeah. Yeah. They all need somewhere to rent. They all need somewhere to buy. There's people selling Airbnb. There's a lot going on. Yeah. So we've moved to Dubai now. Yeah. We're settled into Dubai. How have you settled into the job itself? Um, well, I was kind of excited in the beginning. I am as well now as well. Um, and I just got my last week, I got my first listing and you get a kind of buzz. Yeah. You can't explain it. I didn't sell anything. I haven't done anything. I just put it on property finder, the portal where the buyers see it. And then I just feel like the luckiest man in the world. I was very happy that Friday, <laughs> the whole day. I was so happy because I feel like I achieved something. So, and, and, and that's what you want to feel. So I can't imagine how I feel if I sell something then. Oh God, yeah. it'd be a crazy moment. Yeah. So, so when, and like in my last job in Sweden, I was, I was always want to chase that buzz. It was the best feeling. And I like set up goals to what I'm going to do this day, at what time, to always challenge myself. And that's, that's the same thing I'm doing here. And it pays off. You have to celebrate them small wins, yeah. even if it's just getting one listing form back. And you just finished training. You had one week training, one week on the floor. And to get a listing in your first week, you should celebrate that. That's a good win. Clara, how have you settled into the job? Well... Uh, the first day was a very good day. It's like Nora said that everyone was very friendly. And then we had the training and it went great, I think. We learned a lot. And uh, of course, you learn more when you go to the floor. Of course. Yeah. When you really get to like sense everything yeah. and see how people react when you call them and everything. And uh, well, I also got close to a listing. Uh, but I haven't really gotten an answer yet. And that's how this job works. And uh, I'm excited for my first listing too. Mm. And uh, hopefully I'll get it this week. Of course, it's yep. patience. <laughs> yes, it's patience too. Um, but yeah. It's the long game. It's it narrow. takes years to be amazing at this job. Yeah. It takes a very, very long time. But it's a good start yeah. from both of us. Just going back to your goals, yeah. you touched on that. What, what are your goals for the future? What do you want to achieve? Like, um, I want to set up close goals or goals that you want to achieve in a couple of days or a couple of yeah. weeks, months. And then you have to in a couple of years. That's just to keep yourself motivated. Because if you're just thinking, oh, well, I, I want a Ferrari. 
Yeah, how are you gonna get there? You, you need can goals. Exactly. So, and it, it's all way also about the mindset you have. And in my mind, I, of course I want a Ferrari, but I have to be here every day, work 12 hours a day, making those calls, get those rejections, go past that. It's not an easy way, but in the end, everything comes to an end. And there is my Ferrari. So this is how I'm like thinking every day. And every day you come here, I think a colleague, Colum said it. You come here, you think in your mind, oh, today is going to be the day. It's going to get better. And it don't. It won't be get better maybe. But you just push. And you come coming the next day saying the same thing. Because you never know when that day will come. Everybody wants the Ferrari and everybody wants the Lamborghini. Yeah. But nobody wants to put the hard work in. No. Getting up at seven in the office for eight, rejection, rejection, to do that day in, day out, week in, week out and see nothing. But that's the hard work that goes behind the scenes yeah. that nobody sees. What's your goals? What do you want to achieve? Well, I actually read a book. It's called uh, Atomic Habits. I don't okay. know if you read that one. And uh, well, it's pretty much, I mean, you can't really have a big like goal. Of course, you can have a goal in the future like the Ferrari but you gotta have like a plan to get there so by like setting a schedule of what to do and not giving up is the most important thing and uh, well I just have the like the KPIs we have mm -hmm. trying to do those every week and uh, have the right mi mindset and then in yeah. order to do that I'll achieve my goals. 100%. Yeah. Mindset is everything. Yeah. It's absolutely everything. And, and patience. You can you can have the sales experience. You can work hard. But what you need is patience. Yeah. And that comes with mindset. You need to know that it's going to take a very, very long time. Yeah. But look, amazing. We'll wrap it up there. Lovely to speak to you guys. Let's go back to work. Yeah. yeah. Hit the KPIs, <laughs> hit the goals. Yeah. And let's smash it. Yeah. Thank let's you very go. much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.